tomatoes. Hey guys, how's it going? Today we have a few really fun things going on. The first involves unboxing a couple of trees that Aaron just bought online and had delivered to us. I think he's in the process of moving them to the Hartley at the moment, so we wanted to unbox them and maybe pot them up today. We're also making marinara sauce to can. I've already got it going in the kitchen. I'll talk about that here in a little while. It smells amazing in there right now. And if we have time, I wanna harvest the rest of our onions. I don't know if we're gonna make it that far, but we'll see. Oh my word, that's a big box. It's odd, they, it shows to lay flat, like this. Well, yeah. maybe, I don't know, they might know what they're doing in terms of huh. packaging. Okay, yeah. you, re you ready for this? Do you have a cutter? I think so. All right guys, so these trees are from fastgrowingtrees.com. I actually have never been on their website. Like I said, Aaron ordered these. I don't even know what varieties you got. I don't know anything about the website either. Really? So like, okay. for all I know, we might be getting dead trees. <laughs> like they came from North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay, so here we go. It's interesting, yeah, that they wanted them laying down like this, as opposed to like standing upright like plants normally do. So do we just, what do we do here? Can we just pull it out, I wonder? No. We're gonna oh, work through these staples here. Whoops. I've heard the name fastgrowingtrees.com before, somewhere like along the way. Oops. Okay. So this is a one gallon size pot it feels like. It is an avocado tree. Do you know what variety? Did you order two varieties? Yeah. Or are these the same? Um, I'm not sure what they are. You know, that doesn't look half bad for coming all the way from, what'd you say, South Carolina? North Carolina. North Carolina. So the, the bottom here, I'm just taking the zip tie off. It was zip tied right here. I mean, the soil stayed sort of in place. At least it's not all, all over inside the box. This is a, a cold hardy avocado is all it says. Do we have links we can put down below sure. to show what you ordered? Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna probably pot these today, but I have really no idea how to take care of them. Uh, it says cold hardy, but how cold hardy is that? Okay, so we looked it up and uh, first of all, this looks nothing like the picture on the, the website. I mean, maybe it's the picture of what it will look like one day. Uh, but the one on the website is like real nice and full and multi-branched. And I think Aaron said that he thought he ordered one that was larger than this. Like a three gallon size probably right. based on what we paid for it. So we'll look into that a little bit more. But the cold growing zone, it said zone uh, 4 through 11 patio or zone 8 through 11 outdoors. That makes no sense that there's a patio versus outdoors. And I didn't really see any, any further explanation. But I would imagine that I, I'm not going to treat it like it will survive outside because I just... We've never really, nobody grows avocados in our area. Our neighbor actually has a huge avocado farm in Mexico. I should talk to Salvador. Yeah. He probably could help me out big time with this. Are you gonna keep those in here? 
Yeah, I'll probably I'll, I'll probably um, pop them in the other greenhouse and then bring them in here. I think they might like it. I would. Okay. Now this one. This looks like it's gonna be, well, a large one, <laughs> obviously. All right, there's the pot right there. Oh, this doesn't have any paper wrapping at all. Oh, look at this. Okay, where are the fans? I don't want, <laughs> want it to get snagged in a fan. Oh, it's zip tight inside, okay. There we go. Oh my word. Thoughts, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll fill out. It'll fluff out a little bit. It looks pretty healthy though. Yeah. Especially coming all the way from North Carolina. Did it break well, off at the top? It's or? defoliating. It's got a crummy looking branch right here. Take that off right away. So this is a Haas avocado, which, you know, we buy at the stores. And uh, I think it said zone nine through 11, growing zone outdoors for this one. So definitely inside. I do think th these like a lot of humidity. So that's something that we're gonna have to keep in mind. In fact, we just started running the AC in here not that long ago and it still feels kind of humid in here but they might like it better in the plastic greenhouse for a little while until it cools off just a little bit i'm not sure we might have to play around with where we keep them everything i leave in there like all of our citrus they're just bearing fruit like crazy i really like to be successful with these so we might just pot them in there and leave them in there for a little while let them kind of root in and then bring them over here eventually um, and I think they are fairly fast growers. Like I said, I don't know a lot about avocados at all, um, but they can bear fruit fairly quickly, right? I, I read somewhere that they can, that some can bear the first year and others can take uh, like two to three years to bear. Well, this one's already, well, these already have some time on them. Yeah. So, you know, definitely wouldn't be this season, but maybe next season once they've rooted in. Yeah. So anyway, that's it <laughs> for these. We'll link them down below. Um, and we'll get them potted up here in just a little bit. But I need to run in, and I think it's time to actually bottle up our marinara that I have going. So we'll get that processing while we get all of our supplies ready, kind of like doing things in shifts today. Okay, so before we get inside, I kind of want to explain what I've done with the marinara up to this point, because it's just been sitting on the stovetop simmering for the last couple of hours, and it smells amazing. So I'm hoping that it processes really well and tastes really, really good. I usually make my marinara sauce from scratch. Whenever I make spaghetti, I make it from scratch. But it would be super nice to have some canned sauce kind of ready to go so that on busier days, we can still have something that's really tasty. And it's a really good way to use up some tomatoes. My mom and I canned 34 pints of diced tomatoes yesterday. And I, and I did film it and I feel like I should have disclaimered and probably should disclaimer right now that I am not a professional at canning or cooking any of that stuff. Typically when I share something with you, it's either something that's tried and true for us or it's a new recipe. And I state that like today I'm following a recipe from the Daring Gourmet. I just looked up canning marinara recipes on Googled it and found the one with the highest rating and it looked really tasty, all the herbs that are in it. But especially when I'm doing a canning recipe, I make sure to follow that recipe to a T because canning can be tricky. And I've done a lot of canning in the past, haven't in the most recent years, but in the past I've done a lot of it. So I'm fairly confident, but definitely when you're getting into canning, I did a lot of um, recipes like from ball canning, ball canning recipes. I don't know if that's what it, the website is, but um, or you can look at extension offices, websites, things like that, and they usually have really good guides on that. So let me tell you what I've done. I've got the recipe right here, so I don't forget any of the ingredients. I didn't capture the first step on camera, but I did sterilize all my jars, the rings, the lids, everything's ready to go on the counter. This recipe says it makes six pints, so that's what I prepared. And then I got a big pot of boiling water going on the stove, and I put my tomatoes in it for about 60 or so seconds and took them out and put them in a bowl full of cold water. Um, usually you just leave them in that boiling water until the skin, skin start to crack. That way the skins slip right off. It makes cleaning them really easy. And then I cored them. I took off any imperfections and I took all the seeds out. So it was just kind of the meat of the tomato. I put all of the meat of the tomatoes into a big pot and kind of just crushed them up a little bit with a spoon and then I added everything else, which I'm gonna read from you, read for you right here. First was six cloves of garlic, all minced up. 
oh my gosh, that started to make things smell amazing in the kitchen. And then um, you're supposed to use a half cup of dried or dehydrated minced onion. I just used the rest of my bottle that I had. I don't think it was quite a half cup, but it was close. And then a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, three tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of sea salt, uh, one tablespoon of dark balsamic vinegar, and then one and a half teaspoons each of rosemary, oregano, basil, and thyme. It calls for one teaspoon of crushed fennel seeds. I left that out because I don't care for that flavor. And then half teaspoon each of ground sage and ground black pepper and two bay leaves. So that's what has been simmering. It's already reduced by, in size by about an inch and a half, two inches. It's starting to look really thick and delicious. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna use my immersion blender. We're gonna blend it all up. I'm gonna taste it, see if we need to add any seasoning. And after I discard the bay leaves, I'll take those out first. And then we'll start packing our jars full. We'll leave a half inch of headspace and then we're gonna put them in a water bath canner for 35 minutes. That's how long they need to process. I'm also adding a quarter teaspoon of citric acid to the bottom of each pint jar. It's either that or one tablespoon of lemon juice. Let's go see it. Yeah, it does look like it has reduced by about two or so inches. It smells so, so good. So we need to find these bay leaves and fish these out before we blend it. There are two in here. Oh, there it is. Yay, that was easy. Here's my immersion blender. I'm gonna move it over here so that my cord can reach. Here we go. taste. Mm. Oh, that's yummy. I don't think I need to add anything to that. Okay, so now what we need to do is add a quarter teaspoon of citric acid to each one of our jars. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to do six jars. I'm going to start with five to begin with, and then we'll see what it looks like. Quarter teaspoon. Funnel makes it super handy so you keep your jars clean. I could probably just pour this in. I'm gonna take a clean towel and just wipe off maybe anything that got on the sides or on the top of the rim. And we'll put our lid and our ring over the top. Ooh, that's hot already. It's beautiful. Okay, let's keep going. We ended up with seven pints of this delicious sauce. I'm so excited about how wonderful it tastes. I'm just waiting for the canner to heat up all the way. We're almost there, almost boiling. But once we put the jars in, we will let them sit in here boiling for 35 minutes. Then we'll turn the heat off and let them sit in the water for five more minutes before we take them out. But we had just enough sauce left. See that right there? to cook up one plate of pasta so we could try it out. That's perfect. Six minutes, six minutes for this pasta. I'm gonna go grab some basil.
Oh my goodness. Does that not look amazing? We're gonna try it now. Okay, I gotta get a dainty looking bite, bite here. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Now the only thing, the flavor's awesome, the texture's awesome. It's just a matter of whether or not it cans really well. Um, so they're in their processing right now. Let's see how long we have left. We got 30 minutes left, uh, so we'll see. We'll pull them out in 30 minutes, but I'm gonna eat this. I'll probably go share a little bit of it too. And then we'll go pot up the avocados while we wait. got them out here to the greenhouse they're looking so sad i did water them right when we got them out of the box hopefully they perk back up it's pretty hot today it's like 98 and that's outside i'm not sure what it, what it is in here I, I could find out oh 109 you know but i've got a couple of pots here that i think are going to work out well now usually when you're repotting something you don't want to pot it up into too big of a container uh, versus the one that it's currently in but this avocado tree is so tall and it's going to be so top heavy if i don't put it in something big and it'll, the scale will look wrong. So I'm just going to put it in this big terracotta pot right there. We're just gonna go for it. This is the soil we're using right here. And then we've got, this is a, it looks like a terracotta pot, but this is from Crescent Garden. It's the rolled rim pot and it's lightweight. I think that's a perfect size for this one right here. And look at that zinnia just blooming its head off right there just growing in the gravel. We're actually gonna have to run back in to pull those jars out. This took me a little bit longer to gather than I thought it was going to. But we've also got this squash plant that volunteered in here. I don't even know what it is exactly. I need to give it a little bit of water. It's got these little round green squash. Anybody know? <laughs> little uh, like green speckles on it. That's where it's rooted in. Bethany actually made a little bucket. And that bucket uh, has a little hole in the plastic bag that lines up with the hole in the plant container that it's sitting in. So we fill it up and then it gives a slow drip to the roots. I just haven't had a chance yet to fill it up today. It's amazing to me though that a plant would root itself in in here. I mean, this is gravel landscape fabric underneath the gravel. There's no, I mean, I'm sure soil over the years has made its way below the gravel with all the stuff that we do in here. But to grow this huge in here, in those conditions, that's pretty amazing. This plant is just massive. There we go. And there's my timer. Let's go get the jars out. Forgot, we just turn the heat off and then we'll let them sit for five minutes. Then we'll take them out. Okay, it's been five minutes. Every single jar sealed. And they look so great, like there's no separation. Sometimes, you know, you get a little liquid uh, separating from the solids and oh, <laughs> <laughs> so long as the flavor is every bit as good as it was fresh this is a winner of a recipe i love it
cooling the soil down because the soil is still really hot too. way to do it. Well, they, they don't look amazing, but they look a little bit better now that they're in containers. They've been well watered. Biotone starter fertilizer added into the soil so they have nutrients to utilize. And it is going to start cooling off starting this evening. I think we might even get a little bit of wind. Uh, tomorrow, so today's 98, tomorrow's 91, and then we're down into the low 80s, it looks for the rest of the 10 day. Uh, so it won't get near as hot in here, but it's definitely, more humid in here than any other area in our house, in or out of our house, any of our outbuildings. Uh, so I think they might be the happiest because of that. I was um, reading up a little bit about them. So they like the humidity. They also like a soil that's neutral to slightly acidic. So that's something that I'll have to consider because even our, we're so high pH here that even our water is. So we'll probably have to add some soil acidifier in to keep them on that more acidic side. And I think they'll like the soil that we put them in to begin with anyway. And they're in containers that drain well. They it did say that they really liked that. So anyway, we'll see how this experiment goes. Any of you out there who grow avocados who might have some wisdom to share with me on this, I would love to hear it. I'd love to have success with these. And you guys, we are running out of time today. I think the only thing that I'm gonna be able to get done before I need to run in and start dinner is uh, moving the onions that are back behind the barn that I put back the last time we harvested. I realized I gotta get that all cleared off and get those onions in storage before I can go out and harvest the rest of them so that I have a place to put the ones that I harvest. So let's go tackle that at least. We'll get that done and then we'll be ready to go maybe tomorrow. We'll harvest the onions. This right here is what I'm talking about. So not very many of them. Most of them have dried down sufficiently. These are the rest of the candies that we harvested last. And then we've got, I have to remember, these might be uh, Newbergs. These are the yellow sweet Spanish. And then these are Walla Walla. So these haven't dried all the way down, but they are so close. I'm gonna go ahead and just prep these and get them in storage so we have space. And basically what that means is just cutting these stalks off and you can leave a little bit on top of the onion and cutting the roots off. I don't really clean up other than that. I mean, something that maybe looks like this, I might, you know, take that off, but you wanna be careful and leave as much of that papery skin on as you can because that will help with storage life. And I'm just gonna put them in this bucket to transfer them to the root cellar where we've already got bins started with these onions.
And you guys, that is gonna do it for our projects today. I'm just taking a minute or two at the pond. My feet are in the water. It feels so good feeding the fish. It's just such a great way to end any project or any day. And I will link uh, where Erin ordered those trees and we'll also link the recipe for the marinara we made today. I'm happy with that marinara, oh my goodness. Such a tasty recipe and the jury's still out on those avocado trees. We'll see how that experiment goes. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.